What's up, everyone? My name is Candice Smith. This is QCP Queen Connect Publishing, and I'm doing a one-on-one -on -one today with the owner of BDE Music Network. Yes, Mr. Chandler himself. What's up? How are you doing today? How's everybody doing today? Good, good. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate, you know, you taking the time out to have this conversation with with me um for the this is actually the second season i say first season because the first time we um worked together i had that tablets unfiltered but this sure. is actually the second season is now unfiltered so anyway tell us a little bit about yourself a little bit about the bde music network okay um again my name is donnell chandler everybody call me dc um, 52 years old, been in the industry now for over 27, 28 years. Uh, my background is in film and video. Uh, I have a degree in uh, communication. And um, I've been in this thing, you know, since, since then, you know what I mean? Like running, learning from a lot of people, um, working on a lot of big events, um, working as a uh, stagehand. If it, anybody know what a stagehand is, stagehand is like the grunt of the work. You know, learning how to um, roll the cables, take the, the equipment off the truck, set it up, and then, you know, set it up for the professionals. So now I went from a stagehand to a CEO. So that let you know that I've been through the ranks, you know, worked with a lot of people, um, did a lot of events. Uh, one of my favorite and memorable event was with Yolanda Adams. So I did some stuff with Yolanda Adams, Vicky Yoey, um, Vicky Wani, and you name it. I've been through the gospel ring. And also to R&B and hip hop. I did some stuff with Brian McKnight, the average white band, um, Ron DMC. I worked with um, AJ and Free before they left, uh, 106 and Park. Um, also met Mr. Stephen Hill, uh, the vice president of BET. So you can say that I've done some stuff, you know what I mean? I worked with T.I., did some stuff with Ludacris, worked with New Edition. I can go on and on about who I work with, but that's not what it's about. Uh, just giving you a little rundown of my background. Um, started uh, BDE Music Network 10 years ago. Um, I have a love and passion for music. Um, I used to manage one of the hottest rap group that was in the 90s. Uh, one of these singers was um, Dip Baby Dip, and ooh, that's my son, girl. A uh, group I'm based out of Florida, a um, group called Breakdown. So look them up on YouTube. Our music is still streaming today. And we, we are playing the music as well <laughs> on our station. Mm -hmm. So that's a little background on me. Um, you know, what what else? What else you got for me, Candice? Well, you spilling a lot of tea because I didn't even know all of that. I didn't know the... Um numerous amount of people that you worked with I did not know all of those things coming into the BDE music network um you know of course how we met was through a mutual person that we know and I was grateful for that connection because um I don't have an extensive career in radio like that my mom kind of worked with the radio station in our hometown and when I was 16, she's like, look, your butt finna have a show. <laughs> so <laughs> that, that was how I started into it. I just was thrust into it and, you know, learned from some very dedicated gospel DJs that just was like, sit over there in the corner and just hush until I tell you to push a button or something like that. <laughs> That's basically how that went. Then all of a sudden, one day, they asked me to do certain things and I knew what to do because I sat in that corner for so long and watched them do it. So That's what's I mean, up. yeah, coming back into it, it's almost like I have to go back in my memory bank and just remember the system of things and the programming of things. But one thing I do remember is the significance of having the radio stations right there in the community be available for the community, um, for pastors that had smaller churches that wanted their messages to go out 
beyond their uh, church. And so that kind of opened my eyes to the importance of just like Black communications and Black radio and just having a message, you know, that, you know, you want to go out and, you know, maybe God is calling you to put that message out to the world and radio being the opportunity to do that. And so, um, you know, I've always recognized the benefit in it, for sure. That's, that's what's up. Yeah, yeah, that's what's up. Well, a lot of people don't really know the extensive background that I have because I don't broadcast it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't go out and brag about who all I work with and what all I've done. I mean, I always ask God to keep me humble. I mean, if you do know those things, I mean, that somebody told you, or I mean, I told you personally. But other than that, I'm just an average guy that I just stand around you and I just be a sponge because I like learning. Um, I own my own production company. Um, I've been uh, owning my own production company now for over 10, almost as now it's going on 12 years. Uh, we have over 22, um, 1099 employees. Um, we're always busy doing something in production. Um, if it's not, we just wrapped up shooting uh, some content for a food truck, a Jamaican food truck uh, last week. And um, the week before last, we just did a, a brand new um, home development uh, by Blackstone um, Construction. And I want to say the home is probably worth $2.5 or $3.5 million home. Um, we went out and took, took the drone out, took some cameras out and shot an interview the CEO of Blackstone uh, Construction. So um, my, my production company is doing pretty well. Um, and then we have the 360 that we uh, we just inquire. So that's doing pretty well uh, also. So like I say, I'm so busy doing um, a lot of stuff that I love doing. Um, to me, my wife always tells me, she said, you don't work, you just play. Mm -hmm. So I can't help right. it. Right. It can, it can seem that way. You know, it can feel I when I'm doing this, you know, working with my magazines, it can feel that way. It can feel like all I do is run my mouth. And I <laughs> tell people that like they'll say, well, what do you do? Run my mouth. Basically, you know, yeah. I run my mouth about stuff and people will hire me to say, can you can you basically run your mouth about this? And I'll say, yeah, you know, I'll learn about it, um, interview people and put out PSAs in regards to bringing more awareness to things. Right. Um, I was on a project with an organization called MACA. And they advocate for HIV and AIDS awareness in the Black community. And I had that project for a year to basically do what I do for that you know, and create buzz and awareness and bring people together to discuss it openly. And so this particular position being in communications, it's very important, but it can look like to the outsider that all you doing <laughs> is you know, meeting up with people, hanging out, yeah. you know, but it is a lot more to it than that. Right. And you know, I know yesterday we kind of got into a conversation about the importance of Black media. And it was very interesting to me because I don't really find a lot of people that I can discuss that with that see the value in it. But just uh, out of, you know, your experience with um, being in Black media, you know, what do you feel like is the significance of it and the future of it? Well, I, I think black media is giving our people, when I say our people, our people of color. Um, but we do service all people. So I don't want nobody to just think it's just a black thing. Um, we service all people, but especially for our culture, it's good for us to have a voice. Because you, you know, 30 years from like back in the days, we didn't have a voice like we have now. Right. Uh, we had AM, we had AM radio. There's not too many, it wasn't there, there was not too many black owned FM stations or satellite stations. Matter of fact, satellite stations, didn't, I don't think it exist 30 years ago. 
if it did, we didn't have the money and the funds to really get online and try to to do it how we how we have the you know access to it now. So just by being being black and being able to own a billion dollar industry, be a part of a billion dollar industry, um, I think is great for our people because we can get out the truth uh, without having somebody telling us what we can't get out. And then also to uh, we can bring awareness to certain you know certain subjects, certain situations, certain political um, situations because we know election is coming up. So you know how they want to just cram, cram, cram all this stuff down your throat. But if you don't have somebody that who looks like you, talk like you, and be able to represent you, uh, you won't know. So. I see, you know, being in, you know, media and being black, I, I see that it's a plus for us. And for the future, I think it, it will also help educate not only the people that's living, but it is set up for generation to generation to generations, because that's what it's about. It's not about us here now. It's like, what, what's your legacy? What are you going to leave for your children's children? Because as long as you're living, your children is great. But when you're gone, you got to say, I want to leave something for their their children, children, and to be able to keep black media going. So that's 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 what I'm doing. Absolutely. You know, I think what you're saying is one of the reasons why I kind of switched it up this season. Um, when I first started off, I did Fatabulous Unfiltered, which Fatabulous is the first magazine that I ever had. And it's really dedicated to the plus size person. And so I had, you know, a lot of women, a couple of women that I know that cater to plus size women in one way or the other. They're models. They have boutiques. You know, they just are in that field. And we just wanted to talk about other things besides our weight. <laughs> right, right. You no, know? and so we kind of stuck with a lot of trending topics and talked about relationships and and things like that. And it was really good. It was really interesting. I learned a lot because those women are different from me. They live in different areas. You know, we had uh, women from New Jersey, Ohio. California being a part of that show and after it that season ended I had to go back to my community and face a lot of things that had been going on and while I was talking about those things there were other important issues that really directly affect me my family my kids I have three sons 20 18 and 6 and so, you know, just addressing some of the things that they have to face, you know, yeah, I felt like it's important for me to use this platform to do that. And right. So, yeah, this season is definitely different. Um, we're going to have community and church conversations, the community conversations that's debuting this September, every Friday, um, it's really with people from my hometown, people from the city that I'm in now that they are in the trenches of things, you know, with the youth and how they're involved in their lives and the impact that they make in their lives. Um, activists that are literally out here taking cases because, you know, they're speaking out and they're speaking up and then they get targeted you know, for doing the right thing. And their lives are changed forever because they speak out, because they're doing certain things. And yeah, we got to give them a voice. You know, I feel right. like being in media, we have the opportunity to, uh, like you said, tell people the truth and show them the truth right. of, you know, what's going on. Well, I think um, Fat Tabulous Magazine um, at that time was serving its purpose. Um, now that that chapter is, we're not going to say it's closed. We're just going to say it's on pause. Um, I think the new chapter that you're doing uh, with the community, I think is uh, it's needed. 
because um, we have, you know, the perfect slot, um, especially during Sundays, like I, I mentioned to you, that will go perfectly, you know, with our church audience, you know, and then also to it'll break it up Friday night, you know, after everybody listen to some good R&B, and then here we go, bring it down with some community, some church community stuff to to have them aware of what's going on, not in, not only in your community, but around the world. So I think um, it, it was needed, you know what I'm saying? It was needed uh, for just programming um, because I was looking to revamp programming, how we're coming across and how I listen to other online stations and you know everybody else just got that one lane and everybody trying to get on that one lane and ride that one lane. We're, we're you know, we just trying to be different. You know, music is great. You know, music brings people together. Mm -hmm. So that's 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 one way you can look at it. But when you when you are broadcasting in 39 countries, you're not only just here, you're around the world. So now you got this platform. It's like, okay, we got this platform, let's let's do something with it. And uh and and that's what we're doing. You know, um, I'm looking more of bringing more podcast shows uh, onto our station. It's good to have the music part of it, but it, it's also good to good to have some like a black C and E. Right. And we don't have the outside of Rolling Show, mm -hmm. um, and Rolling Show is pretty much is on YouTube. I don't think he's streaming like live like on a station like ours. We would love to have some of this content content on our station. But we don't have it, so therefore, you know, you will be a part of it, of the start that we're trying to uh, push. Like I say, the music is always going to be the music. You know, today's hits is tomorrow's hits. So if you can, you know, be like New Edition, be in this game for over 30 some years and still ride, you know, sell out shows. I mean, that's the same way how we're going to be on our, on our station. If you can be on our station and still have a multitude of audience, we still gonna broadcast you. It's just as simple as that. Right. So yeah, let's talk about your audience. You know, what is the extent of it and you know, how far does it expand? Is it multiracial? Our audience is is um well it fluctuates. You know what I mean? You may have um some from I want to say 16 to 28. Then you may have some from 28 to 35. And then, you you know, we uh, also to play a little old school. Um, so that's like from 25 all the way to like 55, 58. You know, my mom is, is, is pushed to 70 and she listened to the gospel every morning. You know, she listened to it every morning along with other people that I know. So we, I, you know, the ages is just like all over the spectrum. And that's what I love about it. And uh, when we first got started, you know, I just, we just started playing anything, just anything, you know, until one day I went to like a beauty salon store and I asked the guy, he was playing uh, satellite radio. And I asked him, I'm like, yo, you know, what station is this? He said, yeah, it's satellite radio. And I say, well, we own our own station. And when I played it for him, he liked it, but the next song came on with a bunch of profanity. He said, nah, we can't, pay, we can't play that. I said, how about I change my format? Then that way, would you guys play it? He said, well, if you change it, we'll consider it. So when I got back, I started looking at the format, looking at the music, what type of music, what time I think people are gonna be listening, um, the traffic jam, if you're stuck in your car, you know, if you're home cooking, you know, if you want to dance, if you want to just chill, you know, I was looking at all of that. And um, that's why we came with the format that we have now. So from five in the morning to nine in the morning, the number of all gospel, you know, because I want people to wake up, you know, with praise and worship. Mm -hmm. Because that's very important for you to start your day. Praise and worship. And then we do like a smooth transition between praise and worship with a little old school and R&B. And then we gradually move up at 12 o'clock. We gradually move up to a little hip hop, you know, just to get you crunk, you know, doing your lunch hour so you can dance a little bit. And then after 12 to three, we bring it back down to R&B, 
a little smooth on me so you can relax or a little. And then five, six o'clock, we, I call it ratchet out. You know, we straight ratchet, you know what I mean? Because, you know, you want to be ratchet every now and then. Right. So <laughs> we have our little ratchet hour from uh, from five to seven, and then I go back to a little R&B. And then after uh, 11 o'clock, that's when we play number of hip hop up until 12. And then we just do our, um, what you call it, um, slow jam from 12, from midnight all the way to five in the morning. And it starts all over again. Okay. Yeah, my son was listening and he came, he said, Mama, this station seemed like every song that I hear you playing. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what you mean? He said, it just seemed like every song I hear you playing is on there. I said, well, you see, that's my type of music or whatever. So we actually play it, you know, when we're cleaning up and I homeschool. So throughout the day. You know, we just are doing random things around the house. So I will turn it on and my son will have it. I'll hear him playing it, um, you know, with his speaker or whatever. But he actually came to the door yesterday because he heard the commercial. And he said, Mom, I'm so proud of you. I said, <laughs> he said, I hear the commercial. And he really assists me with a lot of things. So that's good. Yeah, that made me feel really good to just even hear him say that so yeah well well that's what the station is pretty much designed for you know like you and i were talking earlier i say you know i don't we don't charge this ridiculous price just to be on our station i try to make it affordable so you know anybody anybody can do it you know because a lot of people when they hear the stuff on a local radio station of course local radio station gonna bust you over the head right um but Again, it's local, you know what I'm saying? And some of the local stations are not online. If they're online, you know, they don't promote it. They don't promote listening to us while you're out of the, while you're out of the state or the city. No, our station is strictly uh, online on one of the best platforms, which is TuneIn. It's, on, it's like TuneIn is like one of the best outside of Spotify and Apple Music. TuneIn is right there. So we are on one of the fastest growing platforms. And for anybody that has a, a small business that want to just broadcast outside of their uh, their 50 mile radius, we're the station to, to do that for you. And it's affordable, you know what I'm saying? It's affordable for, for you to be able to join um, our network and also to be heard. So I try to keep it affordable. I try to, you know, make sure everybody has a great experience because that's what it's about. I mean, when I created this station, I didn't create this station to try to get rich because that's not how I created it. I created it out of love, out of love of me. So if it's out of love of me, I mean that God will take care of it because I'm doing it out of love. I'm not looking to, to be rich. I mean, I'm already rich. I'm, I'm rich, you know, in God's eyes. So that's how I look at it. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm here to help, and if if I can help you get your programming out and to expose it to our listeners, and then it take off from there, you move to a bigger platform. I can just sit back and say, "Hey, she bought it here first. We were the first one to crack it open." Right. Yep. Absolutely. So, do you have slots and things like that available? for people to be able to sign up for programming, um, for advertisements of their businesses? Yes, we always have slots. Okay. Slots are always available. Okay. And, uh, it's always available. You just let me know what your budget is, and I'll let you know where I can put you at, you know, within our program. Okay. Well, that's what's up. Um, the unfiltered spot is running currently, so you can definitely download the TuneIn app right now today and search for the BDE Music Network and begin to just tune in to some great music. As you've heard throughout the day, you could catch some gospel in the morning, ride out at the gym with you some hip hop. That's it. Some lunch and dinner over some R&B and then have some nice talk radio in the evening. And it sounds perfect to stay abreast on what's going on in the community. So this is outstanding. I'm ex 
super excited about the next season of Unfiltered being broadcast on the BDE Music Network. And then we'll be following it up with the next season, which will be the church conversations. And that's to be announced. But I'm super excited. Tune in. The first Friday of September is when we premiere. And then you could catch September the 2nd. Yep, September 2nd, 8 p.m. Catch the replay Sunday morning, 8 a.m. All on BDE Music Network on the TuneIn app. All right, so do you have anything else that y'all don't want to take up too much of your time? I feel like this has been a very good conversation and I yes. can't wait to put it out. Also to, also to let them know the quality, the audio quality. Um, how do you feel by us broadcasting your um, uh, filter last season? How, how, how did you receive the audio quality? Was it good for you? It was really great. It was, you know, the best, I would say, <clears throat> as I've been publishing and broadcasting things, um, it's been the best platform. It's been the, the platform that got me people reaching out to me, you know, that I didn't know of. It definitely put me in another network. Um, and I think the quality of it plays a big difference, plays a big role in it. You know, when you put out a show, um, people are looking to see how you're investing in your message. And That's correct. Cool. Yeah. That's correct. Cool. I tell everybody that all the time. People want to know. No, not want to know. People want to see. Mm -hmm. They want to see how much you are already invested. Right. Once they see and hear uh, how much you invest, then they're willing to invest. Nobody's not going to invest in it if anything is not what you're doing is not manifesting. Right. So you're absolutely right. You know, um, that's one thing that I try to make sure the quality sounds good. And I always tell you, uh, Candace, uh, this this is too low. Uh, Candace, you got a, a four minute number dead air in the front. Right. <laughs> I try to make sure that when we're broadcasting your your show that we're broadcasting at the highest level possible. Yep, absolutely. You know, I have to get my stuff together. I have a few uh, snafus, but you do always make sure that whatever is going out is the best, you know, and I just have to go back and say, hey, we got to get this right. We got to correct this so that it stays up to the standard of what you're doing you know, and it helps right. me to come up to a higher standard as well in what I'm producing. So I think it's been a great partnership thus far, and I'm looking forward to, you know, many more seasons to go to just continue to get the message, messages of the community and the church out. And Fat Tabulous will be coming back, you know, the ladies seeing the advertisements go out, and so I already got a few calls like, hey, when we doing Fat Tablets again? And I'm, I definitely want to do it again. But like I shared with a few people, it has to be at a different standard than when right. I first came out. So I'm looking to have us some good, good photo shoots and, you know, really do it up on the visuals and the imagery. And then as well, the conversations, making sure that we're ready, you know, really prepared to have them. So, but we're going to come back. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Well, you always have a home here. So whenever you're ready. Yes, for sure. I appreciate that. Thank you for your patience because I went through a transition between Fat Tablets and now, and I feel ready to, you know, come back out again with some good content. Also, too, I want to shout out my girl Taylor out of New York. You know, she the one that hooked us up. So yeah. I got to give her props. If I don't say that, she, she'll she probably call me and say, DC, what happened? So, <laughs> yes, so, she did. Yep. So I, want, I want to give her her props. You know, right. She, just, she deserved it. Yes. So kudos to Taylor. That's what's up. Yes. Thank you, Taylor, because she did. She hooked me up by, you know, dropping your name in my ear. And I say, yeah, I'm definitely interested. So 
that's been a really great connection and a great journey. So shout out to Taylor. Thank you. That's what's up. Yeah, she has a show that comes on Friday, um, Chronicles of Sheep. Um, I think she's getting ready to change her name of her show. So she hasn't let me know what it's called yet. But I told her, I said, wait till the fall before you change your name. You don't want to change your name in the middle of the season. Mm -hmm. So she's supposed to let me know what the new name is. But right now, she's she's broadcast on an I network as the Chronicles. Sheep. Yes, and that was one of my first interviews was with her on that show. And I think I just posted the memory of it on Facebook the other day. It was a, maybe two or three years ago now. Oh, wow. <clears throat> so, <laughs> yeah, we've had a very long, good, you know, networking uh, relationship. So I really appreciate that, Welcome her welcoming me into this family and into this network. So... Um, I'm looking forward to many more. Thank you so much, DC, for joining today. And I learned a lot. I didn't even know all of these things. So this has been a great conversation and I'm looking forward to it. You guys, if you would love to hook up with the BDE Music Network, you can reach out to me. I'll definitely um, set you up. And um, yeah, stay tuned for the first episode to drop September 2nd, Friday, 8 p.m. on the BDE Music Network. Download that TuneIn app and begin to tune in to all of that great music. And um, if you want to hear your music on the radio, you can hit me up about that as well. And we can work that out um, as well because you invite indie artists to come aboard, right? That's correct. Yep. So there's a few artists in the works that'll be coming through Queen Connect Publishing. They'll be on the cover of some of the magazines, as well as hopefully you'll hear their music on the BDE Music Network. So I'm super excited. All right, y'all. Until next time. Peace.